So how do you discover which is best for you, which Linux distribution to use? And why do you prefer using Linux over Windows? There are a lot of distributions that all have websites with instructions, so you can also get... Okay, so why do you like using Linux? I personally like to use Linux because if it's open, there's, uh, I can customize it, so I have a, a blue desktop for the Ogoxy as much as I can. I can put any program on there, I can play with it, I can tweak it, so for example... So you're a tuner? Yeah, I like my toys, but the other great thing about Linux is the community. Now, if I have a problem, I can fix it. Now, that's one advantage Mac has. Apple have a great community which runs all its operating systems on Mac. But Linux has a great community and they will help. They will do it on the internet. Alright, so how is Ubuntu different from the Mac? Because you said it's a Linux based, right? They both would run Linux and all the rest of it. How is it different? Well, yeah, Apple is a little bit different in that it's an expensive proprietary system. You buy the hardware. Okay, let's stay focused on Mac and Ubuntu. Yeah, so Ubuntu still have the Mac interface, but you can get all sorts of app S and tools onto it. Uh, so the operating system is more OS based, Apple is more app based. So you can't get Windows access onto your Mac because uh, there are not. All right. Oh, but aren't all app is binary? So can't you just sort of mix and match them? Yeah, you can as long as they compile under the same sort of environment. So you can get all sorts of tools, but uh, there are still some things on Windows that are not on OS. So yeah, there, there is a way of getting around the limitations. I think I don't think you have a package. For OS X. So, you have everything you need with Ubuntu? Yeah, yeah, you don't have to pay for it. You can put everything on it that you can get for free on other. In fact, you sound quite frustrated with Apple. I mean, do you think that the Apple OS at this point is as good as it can get, or is it nimble enough to keep up with new tech? I think it could be a bit better. Uh, but then again, there is a uh, a chance uh, uh, Apple's working on that. Maybe it could be better. Uh, you know, there are some things with the graphics acceleration of OS X. I mean, it just ticks over graphics to the equivalent of a, an Intel i processor. It's not as good as the graphics cards. It looks just as good, but it doesn't actually get right to it. It leaves a bit missing out. So it's kind of like, well, sort of like looking through a cinema TV window on it. But yeah, when working in previous versions of OS, that, but I don't think it's any uh, way or form a hindrance, but just like a little something to think about. Seems to have held their market share incredibly well. <laughs> you know, if you look at Windows and Windows Server, Mac OS does seem to have lost market share overall. Is it because Apple are happy to operate on a lower market share? Or is it more because people don't really want it? Uh, there are a few people that really want to use these Mac OS X because OS is so nimble. It could be more so. And I'm, at, I'm still quite up to date with what's going on in the Intel sector with Linux and all that. I'm disappointed with not seeing any development with this one. They're just leaving the eyes at the moment. They make no intel moves whatsoever. And it's eerily quiet. We are going to move on. Right, back to our chat with Danny O'Brien, head of the Foundation of Information Technology Users Group. So you were talking about the increasing numbers of children, young people pressured into applying for this government scheme, and they will be paid P30 dollars worth plus 100 a week to go down to that place in Newport. And Apple are actually providing hardware to these school children? Can I ask, why do you think Apple do this? Because from the outside, it seems a strange thing for them to do. If I was in the Apple position, then I... And they do this with the machines itself. They want people to be using those machines, uh, which kind of leads me on to ask, Apple's not selling Macs anymore, surely, simply because they're selling them to schools. Um, kids with limited, I suppose, knowledge of him just don't think they're cool or maybe a bit last season by comparison with you know a pc 
If I was to answer that for, then I might be totally wrong. But I'd go along the lines that Max are more fun to use. Especially for, because uh, my daughter will be in the school system when she arrives. Okay. I'm still buying her Max because she will only use a Macintosh. The lab is a Macintosh based lab. She won't use a PC. I do imagine it must be an interesting for you and your family and that you've got children who now both take it for granted that they'll always use a Mac, even if you uh, decide to, you know, if you're going to you know, buy a second machine together, will you say, uh, right, here we are, you've moved over to the dark side, we'll buy a PC down the road? Not under any circumstances. They don't even want to look at a PC, which is really, really weird. Young kids now, Joshua, my daughter at the moment is 10, she'll not even look at a PC. That must be odd. To go against the grain and buy a PC. I have these moments where I'm sort of worrying about for them as adults. Will they then have peers in the workplace when they're coming of age and stuff like this? There will always be this contempt for my machine. Of course, he'll said that his daughter's a Mac school girl, a bit like a private school girl, but I've already been a Mac user for about 13, 14 years. So, of course, that was my first machine when I was there. But still, everyone in the journalistic outlets, the community, uh, most people I know are still on PC. I think it's changing now. Even the people that... Welcome to the show, everyone. This week, we're tackling the scandalous story of veteran presenter Rachid Mbaki from BFM, who was suspended over allegations of running stories planted by an Israel-based organization. We'll be talking to experts to dig into the details of this story and get to the bottom of what really happened. So stay tuned for more on this story and how it could be part of a large effort to spread disinformation.